All right. Well, good afternoon or morning, depending on what part of the country you are in. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. We very much appreciate it. We're going to be going over, as you can see on your screen, the Taking Accounts Payable to the Future, Five Pillars of AP Automation uh, presentation today. Uh, myself, along with the folks from Canon Information and Imaging Solutions. Uh, just a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, all attendees have been placed on mute for the duration of the presentation. If you have any questions, you can su submit them through the question portal, and we'll be uh, going through them at the end of the presentation, but no need to hold them till the end. Uh, as you think of them, feel free to put them in there. Uh, we do have a few uh, polls that we'll be asking today that require your participation. Uh, answering the polls really helps us better cater our webinars on what you want to see. Also, um, the live results may also uh, add some content to the presentation if um, we know uh, kind of where you stand on a couple of the items. Um, a copy of the presentation will be sent out a few days after the webinar. And all of um, our past webinars, as well as this one, will be found on the Allure Inc. Inc. YouTube channel and Allure.com. So just a couple things to get us started. So uh, we're going to start out here with introductions. So um, as I think I said, my name is Patrick Gehagen. I'm a managing consultant in the Strategic Advisory Services Division of Allure. I'll be telling you a little bit more about Alir in a moment. And I'm joined by two members of the Canon Information and Imaging Systems uh, Company, Peter Lopes and Cliff Auten. Uh, these two gentlemen will uh, introduce themselves in just a little bit as uh, we get to their portions of the presentation. So um, as I said, uh, just want to start with a quick introduction about Alir, and then I'll turn it over to Peter to talk a little bit about Canon. So, um, as it says there, we are established in 2005, just celebrating over 13 years of being um, many of yours, hopefully, a uh, trusted advisor. Uh, we really pride ourselves on this, this idea of being a trusted advisor, partnering with you to not only um, select, but implement um, uh, technology across your organization, as well as implement uh, business processes across your organization, which is the area of the business. Uh, Alir that I work in. Um, we also uh, do a lot of work in Cloud HCM uh, as well as the other uh, Oracle Cloud, HCM, ERP, PeopleSoft Financials, and HCM, and um, uh, the Strategic Advisory Services Division that uh, I work in that supports application roadmaps, business process improvement, account payable automation, and end user and change management. Um, one thing I'll point out on our slide as well that we're excited about uh, and one of the reasons for today's webinar is we were actually named the 2018 Partner of the Year with Canon Information Imaging Solutions uh, as a partner with them for over two years now. Very excited to uh, win that award and I'll turn it over to Peter Lopes to tell you a little bit about Canon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Lopes, and I'm with Canyon Information and Imaging Solutions. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today, tell you a little bit about Canon. Typically, when people think of Canon, they think about cameras and printers and copiers and the like. Uh, we're Canon Information Imaging Solutions. We are the software division of Canon. Canon itself was established in 1937. And we're very proud of the awards we have awarded us this, this year. We were awarded the fourth most admired company in the computer category by Fortune Magazine, and also nominated as one of the world's mo most ethical companies by the Ethisphere Institute. Something that a lot of people don't realize about Canon is we've been in the top US patent earners for the past 32 years. So we've been in the top five in the pa for the past 32 years, and last year we were third in 2017, 2,634 patents issued to, pat to Canon. So the ones that were ahead of us were Google and Samsung. So we're in pretty good company there. Canon Information Imaging Solutions is a division of Canon, and we were formulated in 2011. And uh, we were cha charged with the, with the uh, duty of going ahead and developing solutions for our customers using Canon's uh, worldwide famous imaging technology. 
our imaging technology or optical character recognition uh, has over 3,000 customers globally. And we offer that solution as part of the, we offer the, that, that product as part of our solutions uh, for automating customers' accounts payables process, for instance, or, or uh, customer service operations or what have you. We have an Oracle partner and uh, we have received Oracle validated integration certification for our solutions that integrate with Oracle's PeopleSoft, JDE, and EBS. We deploy our solutions with partners such as Lear and who are leading technology providers in this business. And we're happy to participate today in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Peter. So, um, and we'll be hearing more uh, from Canon uh, throughout the presentation as well as um, seeing a demo of their solution towards the end. So um, just wanted to kick off here with kind of starting out with and talking about why you, some of you might be here today, right? Um, there's a lot of um, business objectives and goals across um, any given organization, but um, talking about uh, AP today, um, th these might be some of the things that you're experiencing and we'll be hoping to provide some solutions to today. Um, you might be spending a lot of time entering data and, and not a lot of time analyzing it. You may lack visibility and um, for those same reasons be incurring a lot of late fees or missing out uh, on early pay discounts that we're seeing a lot across the industry right now. Uh, you may be interested in um, defining workflow or um, kind of getting rid of the manual enforcement of, of signature authority policies. Um, you may have no uh, system or a separate system or unintegrated system for imaging of invoices and you want to know more about um, uh, that integration that Peter was talking about earlier that we'll talk about in a little bit. And, and whether you're a PeopleSoft customer or you're an EBS customer or a JDE customer, you know, one of the common things that we're seeing today is this new world where technology is being delivered to our to ERP customers in a more fluid way uh, more often. And you need to figure out how you're going to work with that and integrate third party systems to it in a in a simple and meaningful way. And and last but not least, I mean, I think we're all always trying to do more with less, right? Use the same resources to produce better results and do it faster. And and uh, these are a lot of the topics that uh, we're going to be going through today. So uh, with that, we do have our first poll question. Uh, so you should see a uh, poll item pop up on your screen. I would love to know, um, uh, is your organization currently running PeopleSoft 9.2, PUM 18 or greater? And there's a reason that we asked this, and I'll be talking about it in a little bit. But uh, yes, you are on PUM 18 or greater. Um, you are 9.2, but not on PUM 18 yet. Uh, you're on an older version of PeopleSoft 9.1 or earlier, or you do not utilize PeopleSoft system. Um, and if that's the case, feel free to drop in the comments maybe what some of those other systems are. So I'll give uh, everyone just another moment here, and we'll close this and share the results for you. All right, so we're closing the poll now, so you should see the uh, results up on the screen there. Um, and it is looking, sorry, let me just switch over here. Uh, so it looks like a lot of you are on PeopleSoft 9.2, PUM 18 or higher. So um, one of the reasons that we asked that question is the integration that we're gonna be talking about today is going to be, um, uh, based on an integration to PeopleSoft that uh, can be done before PUM 18, but uses some delivered web services that were delivered in PUM 18. So, uh, and when I said a lot of you, by the way, I did mean all of you. Um, so uh, we're gonna talk a little bit, um, so we're gonna talk about OCR technology and, and how that uh, played into this project, but we're actually gonna be going over a case study of one of our clients and, um, uh, we're going to start out here by kind of outlining the before process. So um, really the, the before at this client was, you know, really filled with a lot of manual entry and duplicated effort and in really four different areas. Um, the first area, and, and some of you may be able to relate to this, was that they were doing manual vouchering, right? Every, every voucher was either keyed or done as a spreadsheet upload into PeopleSoft. 
Um, but then the image was actually produced and saved in a second system. Um, and then a manual link was um, was created, a, a URL between the two systems that had to be generated each time you uploaded a voucher. Um, once that vouchering was completed, the um, AP card then had to make manual decisions about where to route each invoice, what people, how much, how many people, and um, many of the invoices were still approved via paper signatures, so then the AP clerk would have to determine if that paper signature was good enough or if it needed additional and uh, route it accordingly. So really, um, this created a situation in which we had two systems that were often out of sync and really no access to the historical invoice or the purchase order data since that uh, third-party system didn't know anything about the POs. Um, and, and we'll be talking a little bit more about POs in a bit, but just a lot of manual effort. And I don't think we find this to be uncommon. A lot of people have unintegrated imaging systems today. So the next thing that um, we were look, taking a look at at this client was um, a, a check request form. I think this is common for a lot of companies that have uh, a process where they need to get a check issued and it may be for an invoice, it may be for any kind of ad hoc purposes, but uh, it's often a paper form and this had was often, um, I always love the story, the client always told me, you know, I used to come back to these and they would always just be sitting on my desk. Again, paper signature, or sitting on my chair, I'm sorry, with a note asking if it could be paid tomorrow. Um, so uh, it was a paper form with paper signatures again, um, and it was hard to separate these out because they were, you know, just keyed as regular vouchers, and and there was no way to report on them, no, and no way for that person who submitted them to um, uh, actually track the status of their request. So, um, and then my favorite part about anything where you're doing paper signatures is is this, right? Can uh, and feel free to drop it in the comments if you know whose signature this is, but um, give you just a moment and see if anyone gets it. But, you know, when you get this paper form on your desk and you're trying to say, is this approved or not approved? And does this person have proper authority? Um, it doesn't always, um, you know, it can be a lot of work to figure that out. Uh, and we did get someone guess it. So this is Thomas Jefferson's signature. Um, uh, not that he should hopefully be signing any check requests anytime soon, but um, the other um, area that we looked at with this client was um, uh, a very labor intensive process for completing their uh, what, uh, credit card transactions or procurement cards. Um, and this was the process that uh, our, our uh, teams went through. So cardholders would use their card, they would get a receipt, they would print it out, they would put that receipt into a manual tracking spreadsheet. They would copy that and scan it over to their boss. Their boss would, uh, baby boss here, would uh, print that uh, spreadsheet out and sign it. Um, he would then, he or she would then turn around and scan that right back into the system and save it to a folder where the AP clerk would take all of those combined spreadsheets create one giant spreadsheet, and finally open this up to PeopleSoft. So it was uh, a pretty time-consuming process. It also had a lot of um, manual effort to check the coding, make sure that everything that was on the statement was on the spreadsheets, and also um, really had no visibility to accruals. Um, so you had no idea if that credit card statement was going to be $1,000 or $50,000, and uh, it was very difficult to track throughout the month. We'll be talking a little bit about how we change that a little bit later. And then one of the other key areas that this client wanted to make changes was around uh, underutilization of purchase orders. So um, while two of their key departments um, did use purchase orders, it really only associated to about 60% of their invoices. And it really relied, uh, caused a situation in which AP had to um, review the invoices, and they had to make determinations around what this coding had to be, at least enough that it could get into the system and get to someone who could make um, a determination on if that was right or not. But it created a situation in which we had very limited visibility to spend, budgets, what your vendors were doing, um, and it required much higher levels of approval because um, uh, when we obtained that approval on the PO side of things, um, we usually do not require it on the voucher side, and it created a situation in which vouchers were routing 
to executives very often and getting held up in those queues. And again, we had to um, uh, guess at the accounting instead of getting that information up front and uh, uh, being able to apply it. So, um, and we'll be talking a little bit about why POs are very important for automation here in a little bit as well. So we do, it does bring us to our second poll question for the day, um, which uh, is how many invoices does your organization process uh, per month? So uh, one to 1,000, uh, 1,000 to 5,000, 5,000 to 15,000, 15 to 30, or more than 30,000 invoices per month. So we'll give you just a, a moment to, to look at that. Um, one of the reasons that we like to ask this question is it really um, can uh, depend on how you organize your purchase order world. It can uh, depend on how you organize your suppliers, as well as um, the technology that um, um, Canon leverages. Uh, it, while it can handle uh, any volume, does uh, have some design decisions when we're looking at different volumes. So looks like we have a good split, a good mixture here, uh, uh, some uh, kind of leaning towards the middle there, but um, uh, nice uh, different volumes in the group. So that's great. All right, Let's just get back over here. Sorry, wrong way. So um, as we uh, finish up the uh, kind of the analysis phase, we, uh, Aliri completed something that we call a strategic roadmap. So uh, our client had uh, asked us to uh, review all of their business processes, reveal it, review how they wanted to work in the future, and really uh, uh, look at different solutions that were in the market and rate them against these six criteria. So um, we call this project a strategic roadmap or a, a and what we do is we actually gather how you want your operate to business your business to operate in the future and um, what's important to you. So while these are their six criteria, it may change from one organization to another. Um, and I'll just talk about two of them here. Um, one is of course an actual fit gap against their specific requirements. So how do they want their their blue skies future state solution to work? And um, and so what we did is we actually evaluated three different solutions and said you know this solution will fit that won't fit it and or it would fit it and it would require you know customization or or some tailoring um, and then one of the most important criteria to this organization was number six which is that impact to current financial systems so uh, Alira actually often calls this the PUM score um, but what we do is we rate um, our solutions off of how much they're going to impact your ERP system, how much customization re is required, how much, uh, how invasive that customization is, and how difficult is it going to be able to maintain moving into the future PUM updates. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about why um, uh, that was important to them and why it should be important to a lot of you on just a couple slides. So in the fall of 2016, uh, many of you may know that Oracle Open World is typically in October. Um, we went to Open World and we had some other um, solutions in mind we were evaluating um, for this client, but we really went to Open World with this idea in our mind that, you know, we, we were looking for something that we couldn't find, something that didn't exist yet. So we attended a lot of sessions, we went to a lot of the booths, and um, primarily we talked to a lot of the PeopleSoft product experts and primarily people like Amira uh, who and said, you know, hey, this is what our client's looking for, and we're not finding it in the market. Well, uh, we were very directly told that um, right before um, that time frame, um, Canon had been validated against um, the new uh, open imaging integration that we're going to talk about a little bit more on a couple slides, but um, that really that they were the, the go-to uh, partner if you were really looking for OCR technology that integrated to uh, PeopleSoft and, and, and an imaging solution that integrated to PeopleSoft. So um, uh, that's when uh, Lear and Canon uh, actually formed our partnership and uh, we've been working together uh, for a couple years now. So um, after we uh, identified the solution, we worked with our client to come up with what the project goals were, right? And they had a, a few primary project goals that we're going to outline uh, uh, I know a lot of you are more interested in maybe the solutions than the problems, so we're getting into that now. Um, 
And these were their goals. So they, they wanted to first and foremost define workflow, right? They wanted to develop workflow approvals that fit their needs and, and, and their compliance requirements, but also, you know, leverage best practices. And we'll be talking about that. Um, we also wanted to increase the usage of purchase orders and in general lower the reliance on human account coding. So whether that means we establish rules for the coding or we use POs, um, that, that was a big goal of ours and we'll talk more about that. Uh, we also integrate, wanted to integrate an OCR solution and wanted to integrate something that, um, as I said, uh, directly integrated and would be able to intake, scan, extract, in, extract invoice data, and uh, Cliff is going to be leading us through a demo of that uh, in a little bit. So um, we wanted to eliminate paper requests and approvals, and this was just an overall goal. It, it relates both to what we did with what's called payment requests and procurement card that we're going to be telling you about. But in general, they didn't want any more paper being shuffled around and signatures being put on that shuffled around paper. And then the last thing was we wanted to eliminate as much as possible where manual spreadsheets were being created and manipulated. Um, really, specifically in any case where the digital data is accessible, they didn't want to be you know, generating these giant spreadsheets that got passed around and got updated and tracked. And, and we wanted to get to a world where um, not that spreadsheet uploads couldn't be done, but that they were based more on um, source data that wasn't being manipulated. So those were uh, some of our project goals. So um, one of, as I said, one of our first goals was to define workflow. And, and um, Alira believes very much in defining workflow in a very collaborative way. Um, uh, while those weren't the exact post-its, um, we actually held a whole bunch of workshops where we got the, together a lot of our key business stakeholders and we provided them some structure, what they could think about doing for workflow, but we mapped out how they would want their workflow to work. And then um, we used that to design a uh, workflow design and of course uh, built that uh, workflow right within PeopleSoft. Um, but uh, what we did was essentially made sure that um, workflow is either defined by the PO requester or going through departmental routing paths that were um, the exception rather than the rule. Um, but we got to a point that 100% of vouchers are automatically routed, right? Um, and this is a key point because even in the cases where there are some exceptions, we put in rules that would at least get the vouchers to the right people who could tell us what they were and what they could be coded as. So um, also worth noting, and we're gonna look at it in about two slides, is that this workflow was is also the same workflow that they and many clients use for purchase orders, right? You want to have essentially the same workflow for non-PO vouchers as you do for purchase orders. And so you can really build it once and then put it in for both sides of the house. So um, something we'll talk about more, and if anyone has any questions, happy to uh, uh, answer them towards the end here. Um, but we got a lot of AP uh, time savings by not having to manually route and make decisions, um, and also a much faster approval time because people are getting these vouchers much faster and um, they were routed to the right people. So um, just under three days total approval time on our vouchers. And I just put this in and Cliff is going to be showing you this a little bit later, but one of the reasons that we uh, very much like the Canon solution is that it uh, delivers the invoice image directly into what's called the related content framework inside PeopleSoft. This was a big request from our business users that wanted to see the voucher data on one side of the screen and the image of the invoice on the other side of the screen. And as you can see, this really um, creates a situation in which you have um, uh, accessibility to both and you can flip through the different tabs um, and make your decisions much faster. So uh, this was a big request from the users and delivered as part of PeopleSoft. Um, the next area that we're talking about today is uh, the use of purchase orders, right? So um, now, so oftentimes going to uh, an organization and saying, you know, we really want to start using more POs can be daunting, right? There's a lot of vouchers, a lot of different spend, and you have to go through it and determine where you can use POs. So we actually, and the content of that top slide is not super important, but what we wanted to do is go through and say, listen, we have a few options for you on how you can manage invoices in the future. Help us put the right vouchers here in the right buckets. So we met with each of the departments and we really got buy-in from our directors and VPs 
and we were greatly able to increase the purchase order. I think they were sitting at around 60%, and I think they're a little under um, 90, about 80-85% uh, in the uh, departmental usage of POs. Um, but really what the PO allows us to do um, and the primary reason for using them, in, especially if you're thinking about an AP automation project, is it allows us to bring in the invoice, have the PO number on it, and match to that PO, and really process that invoice without having to think about coding, think about who's approving it. It can route to less approvals on the actual voucher. Um, and you have lockdown accounting um, that um, you know is right because the person who um, initiated the purchase uh, tied that accounting to it. Um, it's also a much better way to tie to departmental budgets and, and uh, spend tracking because you're able to say, you know, we issue this PO for this type of spend for this time period, and you can track that they're actually um, tracking to those costs without having to, you know, manually run a bunch of voucher queries. So uh, uh, we're going to go into a couple more pillars, but we do have one more, or we do have a poll question here for you, because uh, we'd be interested in how many of you utilize or do not utilize POs today, um, and feel free to drop any comments in about this as well. But um, how does your organization utilize POs? Um, yes, it's for the majority of your spend. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes I do, meaning maybe use it for capital purchase or maybe use it for certain types of spend, but not all. Um, no, but we'd like to, or no, it's not in our roadmap, um, meaning your non-PO vouchering process is working well for you and you don't see a need potentially for POs. All right, and we'll close it out here. So uh, again, uh, always good to see a little bit of a split. It looks like some of you are um, using POs quite a bit and some are either interested or um, uh, use it for some of their stuff. So, um, so that takes us into our third pillar, which is really one of the, the again, one of the primary reasons that we partner with Canon and, and one of the um, main reasons that we really like their solution is um, that we wanted to, at this point, integrate an OCR technology, but a lot of the OCR technologies we were finding were either um, not big enough, meaning they weren't scalable to the volumes that we needed to do, um, or they had very difficult integrations to PeopleSoft. Um, and so what we were able to do is, um, by using uh, Oracle's validated integration called the Open Imaging Integration, we're able to bring in invoices, extract the information, and after it's verified, if necessary, bring it directly into PeopleSoft, build the voucher, and put the image link right inside the voucher page. Um, this can be done without any customization. It's all done through um, your PeopleSoft integration broker and um, one of the primary goals of our project. And I'm gonna, um, go through this part pretty quickly just because Cliff is going to show you all of that process in a little bit. But this, uh, in this set of web services was delivered in PUM image 18 and um, is uh, continued to be supported, obviously, uh, throughout as long as uh, PeopleSoft is supporting it in their PUMs, which is um, one of the reasons to select it. So at that point, we built a lot of support. We went live with those pieces, right? We did the OCR, we did the workflow, we did the purchase order increase, and um, we really uh, had a very positive feedback from our teams, uh, both in the AP and in the business side. Um, and they asked us, they said, well, this is great. This is going much better now. You know, there's, can we do a, a few other things? And um, we did uh, four different things here in a follow-up project. The first one I just wanna mention is that we, expanded the use of the OCR technology to reading property tax statements. And that's an area that um, the uh, CAN solution, I know that we are talking about it in the area of AP today, but can, it can read all kinds of document types. Um, and so I do like to mention that there. Um, you can also, uh, we also implemented supplier registration and supplier change requests. Um, these are modules within the purchasing module of PeopleSoft. Um, and great for onboarding new suppliers or updating supplier information. But then the two that we're going to talk about now is we implemented what's called payment requests, um, which is uh, in the payable space, and uh, the procurement card module, which is also within purchasing. And it's worth noting that I talk about a lot of these things because you'll notice all four of those were areas in which 
this client wanted to um, continue to make improvement and none of these items required them to buy new modules or expand um, uh, into uh, new technologies or anything like that. You know, uh, payment request for instance was developed and delivered in PUM 8 uh, of uh, PeopleSoft and if you, uh, you know, own the payables modules, you own it. And so it's a really great way uh, to uh, process ad hoc payments, things like sponsorship, conferences, donations. Basically, um, we used it for anything that didn't have an invoice, right? So anytime you need to pay something, but you're not gonna get a physical invoice from someone. But it eliminates paper and paper approvals. It enforces combo edits at the time of entry. So you know if you're entering all this information on paper, one of the big downsides is you don't know if that accounting is valid at all. Um, uh, you know, they put a five digit number instead of a six digit number and now, you know, you don't even know what account they want it on. So, um, we uh, built a workflow for this. So, it's worth noting, uh, payment requests can either have its own standalone workflow um, or it can go through your voucher workflow. So, it's a configuration option when you uh, turn it on. Um, but we did a workflow where it went first to the AP team so that they could validate that the accounting was right, that everything that needed to be there was attached. And then after that, it went to the business approval um, path. So, you know, the person's management that entered it. Um, people really love this. And one of the key reasons was that item I talked about earlier, which was people used to drop these paper forms off at the desk and they would have no idea when they were getting paid. So now they can actually, the moment they push send, they can see who is pending, where it is, when it's going to be paid. You can see all the supplier information um, and you can execute different types of payments. Um, depending on how you have your supplier master set up. But as soon as it's fully approved, it automatically becomes a voucher and pays, right? Which is, um, you know, no more needing to generate manual checks and all of that. So um, people are really happy with this payment request. And again, it's built into uh, payable. So, and then the last area is, um, you may remember this really fun graphic uh, on the right here, where um, we uh, had a lot of different steps to get these procurement card transactions into the system, but um, we changed it a little bit and uh, it looks a little more like this now. So um, again, inside of payables, uh, or I'm sorry, inside of purchasing, delivered way back in PeopleSoft 8.9, you do have this module uh, called procurement card. Um, and it's a great place where you can actually load a, you can load it monthly, most people do it daily though, a transaction file from your bank and it's all the, previous days settled credit card transactions from all your cardholders. You load the file, it splits them into um, what's called My Wallet, which is a different My Wallet than Expenses, just FYI. Um, uh, but it splits it into all the different cardholders. They can then code them and you can load predefined coding rules. You can decide whether or not I'm allowed to change the coding or not allowed to change the coding. Um, I can attach receipts and verify them. Um, you can approve them right in that uh, system. And then at the end of the month when you have all of these approved transactions, you actually just run a job that builds the voucher. So um, you can run, you can build a voucher by cardholder or business unit. Um, but one of the big advantages, other than the fact that previously cardholders had to wait till the end of the month to start working on their reconciliation, now they can do it you know, two days after they use the card, um, which is their big reason for loving it. Um, it also really makes accruals much easier because you know how much people are spending throughout the month. So whatever, uh, whatever point in the uh, statement where you need to uh, accrue these transactions, you're able to run, you know, a company-wide um, query or to process to see what the accruals are and, and get them into the system. So again, um, you'll notice the theme, but um, it's uh, really about uh, using delivered uh, technology. So um, uh, we have one or two more slides and then we're going to turn it over to the Canon team. Um, so what, what we want to kind of summarize here when we talk about uh, taking AP to the future is, is there are a lot of different options and, and they're not all, you know, when you think about all the technology that gets delivered with pump updates, not every piece of it's important for you, but um, do a you know do an analysis, do a roadmap, understand what your what your organization needs and and what the path to get there is. And and of course, Alir um, has our strategic roadmap product that we uh, believe in a lot that helps people define their path. Um, 
But um, I also like to talk about bundling changes, right? Um, you've heard, heard me talk about a lot of different technologies that we implemented. Because we had that holistic approach, because we knew what the vision was for the future, we were able to uh, leverage some of the same resources during the same time frame to do all of these things kind of uh, overlapping. It also greatly increased the, um, the OCR and the um, AP automation um, initiatives by making sure that the pieces were put together in the right way, but um, really make sure that you can, uh, it also really can lower some of the cost for implementing. Um, and then the last bullet's the main one I like to talk about, which is, you know, with the new world of continuous delivery, PeopleSoft is delivering tons of cool stuff to you all the time. And if you can evaluate it, determine if it adds value for you, um, do it maybe a cost benefit analysis on it, you can uh, accept that technology and without even buying new things, um, implement things that will greatly increase your productivity. Um, and you should look first at the things you already own, right, before you start looking at new modules um, uh, as they deliver them. So um, I think our maybe our second to last poll question, um, which of the following best describes your level of automation and payables? Um, so we're not very automated and it is a priority uh, in the next uh, 12 to 24 months. We are not very automated and are looking to change this. Um, we are quite automated in AP, but we're looking to take it a bit further. Um, or we're fully automated in accounts payable, which means you are already in the future, which is great. Although the future always changes, right? So um, give everyone a couple minutes here, or a couple seconds here to finish this out. Alrighty, I think we will get this closed and see what we have for results here. Uh, so it sounds like a lot of you are in the not automated and uh, looking to change this, which would make a lot of sense, um, uh, whether you have a current solution or, or um, are looking to enhance current solutions. Um, obviously, you uh, joined our webinar for a reason, so I'm very glad you did. So uh, with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, Cliff, uh, who's going to go over the um, high-level, quick high-level benefits of the uh, solution, as well as uh, do a demo of the Canon AP solution for you. Thanks, Patrick. Um, I think I just need to be granted the ability to share my screen, please. Okay. Here we go. I should be headed over to you. Yep. Here we go. You should see my screen here momentarily, and I'll, I will just throw up, uh, display the same slide you just had up here, actually. So you should be able to see that. Patrick, let me know if that's not the case. Um, I believe my, Perfect, my colleague, Peter, Peter Lopes, my colleague, is actually going to speak to the benefits and I'll then um, of, a, of a typical solution, the future state, and then I'll cover the, the, the overall process and the solution demonstration. So, Peter, can you take it from here for this one slide? Certainly. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, I know all of you are probably wondering, you know, what is the benefits of automating my AP, autom my AP process? And I'd like to share a few of these benefits with you. Uh, for instance, once you have uh, a true automation of your AP process from start to finish, you end up with some true benefits in the accessibility and accuracy side. What that really means is now you have reliable, accurate information uh, that you can access very easily through the content repository as well as from any mobile device that you might have, such as a smartphone or an iPad and, and the like. Uh, you also have the business intelligence that is now available for the various stakeholders throughout your organization. So now you have information that previously was not available to them uh, because it was pretty much locked into the manual process within accounts payable, now available throughout the organization uh, to share and utilize and leverage for the benefit of the organization. Your business process improvements also happen here because what happens is you now have a, a tool in which you can improve your, your vendor relations. What that means is that now you can go to a vendor and you can say, I'm going to pay you early provided you're going to provide us with a discount uh, on the invoices that we have from you. 
and you can now negotiate early payments for a, a financial benefit to the to the to your company. You also have the, uh, the opportunity here to consolidate vendors because now you can see your vendors and how they're performing and which ones aren't performing or, or, or coming up to the mark, if you will, and start to consolidate your vendors so you have a smaller number that you're working with going forward. And then, of course, the standardization of, your, of an efficient process. Now you have standardized processes throughout the organization. Everybody doesn't have their own business process, which is a manual process, in order to uh, review and approve and assign GL coding to invoices. It's one standardized process that makes it a very efficient means of processing the invoices as they come into your organization. Flexibility, of course, scalability are very important because as businesses grow, you need a solution that can grow with you. And that whether, whether it's a company expansion through acquisition or, or indigenous growth, it's however your, your business grows, you need the flexibility for the, org for the system to grow with you without having to trash the one that you have and go for another one. The AP department then becomes a strategic resource throughout your company. That information that, that accounts payable has is very valuable to everyone in the organization from sales to finance. It's, uh, everyone purchasing, everyone is, is, it's very important information that's now available to them as I mentioned before. And uh, that flexibility and scalability is, is truly a, a result of an automated solution. And then of course the Canon brand, we build on our trust and our partnerships with companies like Alir and Canon, who is a Fortune 500 company, we own, we develop, and we support all our technologies and we use it in our solutions. So, so as I mentioned before, our OCR technology, which is a leader in the industry throughout the world, has over 3,000 customers worldwide. We're looking forward to working with Alir and, and hopefully that we can help you, each one of you, uh, with the automation of your AP invoice process. Cliff? Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm Cliff Othian, uh, Senior Solutions Consultant with CIAS, Canon Imaging and Information Systems. And I, um, I'll be happy to, uh, to step through a, a demonstration of the solution today um, for you, just a uh, high level demo, if you will, um, given the time provided here. Um, if I could first though, um, what I'd like to do is just um, review the, um, the process here. If it's a sort of a high level, um, generic process for AP automation. Um, it's, it's this slide here that if we step through it first, gives you a little context of, before jumping into the, the demo of the live software, as well as um, provides you a reference point to sort of understand the solution from the, the, from the perspective of the different modules that comprise it and that sort of thing. Um, so it's, um, it, it might not be um, exactly as you envision um, accounts payable to work in the future or how are you doing it today? There are many, many options within the solution and chances are it will meet your requirements regardless. Obviously for a short little webinar like this, we don't have enough time to show every different option. So this is one that's kind of just generally acceptable. It, it usually resonates with people even if their process doesn't match it exactly. So um, if I could just walk through this, I'll start at the very top left here, um, what's most common course is for suppliers to submit invoices to an organization even if, even if you're not automated that's happening today um, oftentimes of course we can't forget paper um, paper documents are still mailed through the postal system um, to uh, to buying organizations and of course increasingly though um, invoices are attached as images to uh, emails that are sent to an AP organization um, in either of those cases we capture those um, with emails that's becoming more and more popular because the, um, the, the system, this little XML fetcher component that you see down here, will strip that email off, the image of, of the invoice, I should say, right off of that email, just as if it had been scanned. Um, and, and we have something similar for paper documents. We have something called the power scan module um, that will allow you to scan paper invoices, of course, at your AP center. Um, let me just step back a little bit to though, give you a little more context about this. Um, if you look at the bottom section of the diagram here, this bottom swim lane, if you will, these two major groups um, in, in the two red boxes or pink boxes, um, th these represent the automation steps or the automated steps, I should say, within the solution. Um, as Peter mentioned earlier in his slide, um, everything you see here 
is um, is Canon technology. It's all developed and supported completely by Canon and implemented by us and by partners like Alir. Um, if you look here to the leftmost section, though, you'll see the modules of our solution that are labeled Iris Extract. That's the ones that are more um, more relevant for the capturing of the invoice document, the image, and the extraction of the character information from it. Whereas if you look more towards the bottom right here, Enterprise Imaging Platform, which we sometimes just call EIP, these are the modules and the automated steps that um, that are more um, that more pertain to the integration with PeopleSoft, storage of the content in our repository for later retrieval, as well as functions that are allowed for things like coding to general ledger, approving invoices, as well as PO matching invoices. There's a lot of flexibility, though. You can do some of those things in either part of the process, depending on your requirements. So if I were to just go back to the flow here, um, whether invoices are, are mailed or paper documents are scanned, um, these two modules you see here, import and analyze, that are sort of coupled together on the diagram, they run automatically um, whenever there's work present for them to, uh, to perform, if you will. Um, and import sort of speaks for itself. It brings in the images. Analyze is where the, um, the bulk of the work really happens for this iris extract technology. Um, that's where the actual um, uh, OCR technology is executed to extract the character data from the invoice. Um, if it's required, um, uh, the, the invoice can then pass to a verify module, which I'll show you as part of the demo. I say if it's required because oftentimes a, a supplier's invoices will finish the analyze step in a complete and validated state. And if that's the case, you have the option to bypass verify and have those invoices flow straight through into EIP. But if it's required, an accounts payable person will receive a notification, like you see here, and they will typically use the verify module to firstly um, examine the invoice image, uh, second, to examine the uh, data that was captured straight off of the invoice image. Uh, they have the ability to make corrections to that data at this stage, and if those corrections are made, they are learned by the solution. It's automatically trained so they don't have to apply those corrections in the future. And thirdly, um, the Verify um, stage is also looking up data in PeopleSoft to validate it very, very early in the process, which is uh, much less costly and, and uh, complex to, to solve and uh, handle exceptions early rather than later in the process. So um, they can do that. It includes things like the supplier information, um, the buying organization, um, it could include GL information if you're going to perform coding here, uh, referencing the PO to make sure it's a good PO for the supplier at a minimum, perhaps offering the ability to match to the purchase order as well. All of that can be done here as well. Um, and then what happens, like I said, the, the, the data and the uh, uh, image flow into EIP. And depending on your requirements, if you haven't done coding, for example, early in Verify, the invoice can be routed out to the field to someone like a buyer or a requester or any organization or even an AP person as well. But usually a business user, user um, can provide the, the, the GL information for an, a non-PO invoice. They also have the ability to approve it if they have authority. Otherwise, it typically climbs an approval hierarchy if you want to do that in the IP. Um, alternatively, for, for a PO invoice, if you haven't matched it by the AP clerk earlier for for manual matching or um, matching exceptions, you can route it out to the business user, even an AP person, to do PO matching within the AIP as well. Normally, PO invoices don't require any additional approval. Occasionally, we'll have customers like for two-way invoices for services that might want one additional approval step. That's why I showed that here. But at any rate, um, the outcome is that once an invoice has been coded and approved or matched to a purchase order where the GL information is obtained from that PO, the system will automatically create that PeopleSoft voucher so you don't have to do that by entering it by hand. Um, that's where the, the, the work that Analyze does to, uh, to capture all that information, especially large line item tables on PO invoices, that's where it really pays off because all the time savings you get from having to enter that information plus having it capture in a more accurate fashion really pays off when it creates the voucher in PeopleSoft automatically. And, and one of the additional advantages is that when it creates the voucher in PeopleSoft, um, it attaches links to the content as well. So the original invoice image, the workflow history, any related documentation, including 
collaboration notes and those sort of things, the audit trail, all that is stored in our EIP repository. But when we create the voucher in PeopleSoft, we create links to it so you can retrieve all that content from our repository and not clutter up or burden your PeopleSoft database with that. Um, but like, like we mentioned earlier, Pat, Patrick mentioned it as well, we do have a, a, a subset of our PeopleSoft customers, probably 35, 40% at least, um, have configured invoice approval within PeopleSoft and they want to retain doing that. That's why I share it here. Um, that's certainly an option. It's, it's very, um, it's very uh, straightforward and standard. So in essence, you wouldn't really be doing approval in EIP, but you could be doing approval within PeopleSoft. That's supported as well. And, and through this approval process, of course, they can retrieve the image, like I mentioned earlier, that's stored it within uh, EIP. And then, of course, from that point forward, the process is pretty much standard PeopleSoft in terms of the invoice or the voucher being scheduled for payment, and also the, um, the, the payables interfacing with General Ledger and that sort of thing. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to launch here a, uh, a demo and I'm going to uh, kick off. And if you notice here, um, let me just straighten this out a little bit here. If you notice here what I'm going to do, hold on a second, please. A little bit. Let me straighten this out a little bit so you can see it better. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm running a demo of the solution and I'm starting with the, um, the verification step that I mentioned there earlier, the verify module. And you'll see from this that um, the image of the invoice is, um, is present there in the left-hand panel of the, uh, of the verify module and the captured data from it is present over to the right-hand side. Um, this is the PO invoice that I'm showing here. Um, it's important because PO is a big part of our of our processing and part of the capabilities that we um, that we offer within the uh, the solution, but I'll just highlight a few things about PO processing and about invoices in general that apply to this verification step. So if you look here, um, the first thing I'm pointing out here is that I have my mouse focus in the invoice number field that you see there to the right. And one thing that's kind of um, useful about the tool is that when you navigate to any field that's been captured. Um, it highlights on the image um, where that data was captured from with the little yellow shading that you see there. So it's just intended as a visual cue that helps a, a verify operator very, very quickly spot check data to see um, that to confirm that it captured as they would want it to. Um, I can actually zone in on the document, the, the top left portion of the document as well. You notice here. I can actually click and, and accept that invoice number just by clicking it. I can zone in on the uh, the invoice as well. Um, what I've just done there is just trained that invoice number by capturing it on the fly too, um, which is very easy to do. And then now I'm in the header level section of the data, but if I scroll down for this PO invoice, you'll see on the image itself where the line level information is. And even though the data that I'm displaying to the right hand side there is all header level information, I can simply press a hot key, which will navigate me down to the line level information within the invoice. I'll do that momentarily here, so you can see how that looks. So once I press that hot key, you see now that I've been navigated down to the line level um, uh, information that's been captured. And these lines have automatically been captured off the invoice document, and they've been matched to the purchase order through these automatic PO matching rules that we have built into the solution. Um, I can also insert an additional line if, if a line hadn't captured or um, I needed to do a manual match or override an automatic match. If you notice down below, I've inserted a line um, down in this section of the document and I could match that line to the purchase order just like the pre-existing lines have been matched. Um, so if you notice from here, I can actually search the PO. Um, if I press the hotkey at that point, I'm brought into a view that allows me to search the details for that purchase order within the, um, that, that are stored in PeopleSoft, but I can see them here in this part of our solution. Like I mentioned, it's just a toggle to get to the line level detail. Um, I can toggle again once to go back to the header level information, like you see here. But um, really this invoice automatically captured the lines, it automatically matched. There's really not much work for me to do here. I'll just go ahead and commit the invoice so that it flows into EIP, like I mentioned on the diagram. So once I go back to the header, 
I can just choose File and Commit, and it'll flow out of EIP, uh, out of IRS into EIP. This is the job list where AP personnel um, typically select invoices for them to uh, for them to verify. They can do that directly from that job list. Here's an invoice that's a little more interesting. Um, it's a it's a two page document um, that um, has an attachment that's really not invoice data. It has some handwriting on it as well. We can show how we can use that handwriting. Um, I think in a scenario is more or less a check request. I will say though, you might want to consider something like the payment request functionality in PeopleSoft that, that Patrick mentioned. Um, that could be an alternative to what you're seeing here as a solution. They're, they're a little different and not all customers use payment requests, but it leaves the kind of part and it can help you sort of assess the feasibility of, of which solution would be better, more optimal for your business processes. This customer here, it was more, more efficient for them to capture the document first and do this as a check request through our solution. So you see it's a different vendor here. It's a two-page document. Um, the vendor, I'm actually ch changing which vendor was captured here by searching the vendor or supplier database within PeopleSoft that you see here down below. Searching that supplier database, I can look up the supplier called Mel's Diner. That's a way to correct the supplier that might have been automatically identified um, through the solution. And then from here, um, you'll see too a good example of where I train the system to pick up the, um, the invoice number if you look at the invoice number that's been captured there, you'll see that the label for it is actually a request number on the document. Um, that's something we wouldn't normally expect to be a label for an invoice number, but the system, like I mentioned, can be trained um, by the AP person while they're processing invoices to use a label like request number to identify invoice numbers or any other field. Uh, the beauty of it, unlike some other solutions, is you don't have to plan this out in advance you have to build templates specifically for suppliers or anything like that. Your AP personnel actually train the system as they're processing invoices through it, uh, which is a big benefit. So if you notice here, um, as I um, as I scroll through, I can actually um, I see the fields that have been captured, and there's actually an attachment page here too. This is a two-page document. If I scroll down, I'll see the attachment page. Um, here, the attachment page doesn't really contain any data that we need to capture or that's used to build the invoice itself is more or less the receipt from the uh from the transaction that was that was um originally captured it's just being filed through here as a check request for payment um so i just use that's just supporting documentation that you see there but as part of this check request process we try to get customers away from this there's better ways to do it through um but it's kind of a transition process where this customer might already have a process where they've got um handwriting on their documents like this with the accounting indicated. Um, just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. I just, my phone just started making a few noises. Okay. Um, so um, here we, you'll see that, um, just go ahead and um, process this. You'll see that the accounting has been entered there on the invoice. Seems like we're a little bit late. I guess Patrick's part maybe took a little longer than we expected. Um, so. Um, I don't know, I guess I'll, I'll let the Lear folks decide. Do you want me to continue with the demo or do you want to wrap up with questions since we're running a little late? I think if we want to process through and at least quickly show the, the voucher in PeopleSoft, I think we'll um, uh, get through that, but otherwise uh, I'm fine with wrapping up shortly. Okay, then I won't speak too much or pause while I'm doing the demo. I'll just pass, just make a few general comments as we pass on through. Entering GL information here from the uh, from the um, image there. Let me, let, let me move this here. I can actually can actually change my demo the way I run it a little bit here and kind of um kind of get you to where you want to be. So here you'll see I passed this invoice through EIP and I just approved it. Uh, one of the invoices that we just saw, and I'll just show how I can 
retrieve um, the invoice itself from the EIP workflow. The invoice data once it's actually passed through into create the voucher in uh, PeopleFlow. Notice so I drill down on the uh, on the um, invoice details of PeopleSalt, then I can just simply click the voucher ID. I can see the accounting that was performed on this check request that we saw here earlier. We just passed it straight on through without any approval required. PeopleSalt would be a good example of one where a PeopleSalt workflow could pick it up if you needed it to. And then from here, if you notice there's a voucher ID field there on the invoice details screen, I can see the workflow history. If I click the voucher ID, it'll navigate me directly into PeopleSoft. And here you'll see um, through the open imaging integration that Patrick referred to earlier, here you'll see where the content of the invoice, uh, which is stored in the IP, can re be retrieved directly um, into the, the, the PeopleSoft screen, whether it's, a, whether it's this voucher screen or an invoice approval screen, um, even though the content is stored in our, uh, in our repository. So with that, I will wrap up my comments, but I can may have one or two okay. more slides here just for you to see. I don't know if there's any questions. Cliff, I think if I can, oh, uh, or if you want to go back to just that uh, last slide there. So um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I know we're a little bit over. I uh, wanted to, uh, you'll see our contact information for both uh, myself, Peter, and Cliff up on the screen here. Um, we do have a couple questions that have come in throughout the session, but I think uh, in the interest of time, what we actually will do is um, just answer all those questions and um, send them out, send the answers out to the whole group. That way you get all of them in writing as well. And um, other than that, we really appreciate everyone's time and thank you for joining us for the five pillars of AP automation. And again, thank you very much to Canon for joining and showing the demo that uh, they did today. We'll also be um, happy to share with you a lot more information about um, that integration and, and how um, really, as Cliff had said, when you get to that last piece there and it's built into, uh, and it's been integrated to PeopleSoft, um, if you did have PeopleSoft workflow built in uh, AP at that point, it would be able to um, go on that path afterwards. So. Again, thank you all very much, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day.